r slash nuclear revenge. Fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, face the consequences. Figured I'd share it here for anyone who's been cheated on recently and needs some catharsis as this is pretty fresh. I met Jane after amicably ending a long-term relationship. I didn't think I'd want to date again, but Jane and I really clicked, and it was such a nice escape. We hung out as friends before moving on to dating, and within six months we had moved in together. I had long since gotten over my ex, and Jane and I were doing great and regularly talking about the future. I was fairly socially awkward and only had a few good friends before meeting her, whereas she had a large circle of acquaintances and friends she introduced me to who became good friends of mine as well. About a year into our relationship Jane informs me that she had a one night stand with someone she had met at the bar. Begs for forgiveness, says she's so sorry that she wasn't used to alcohol or the usual excuses. Me not wanting to lose this relationship too, and having invested so much time thinking about my future with this girl, believes her. It wasn't easy, and I ended up in therapy for my anxiety, but we worked through it after a lot of talks and crying and long nights, gradually rebuilding trust, after she reassured me regularly that I was the one for her, and she was still committed to our relationship. I confided in a few close mutual friends, who kept it to themselves. Everything seemed back on track, and I thought we healed. Another year passes, when I notice Jane seems off, she's gone more often, more secretive of her phone, I'll wake up to find her on the computer instead of in bed. Red flags flying. One weekend she tells me she's going to her mother's to help her with spring cleaning. I don't really get along with, or speak to her mother. Her mother is an incredibly religious woman who was already upset with Jane for living with me before marriage and a few other personal decisions on her end and feels as if she has control over her life due to financially supporting her, which is why I assume she figured that it'd be a safe bet I wouldn't talk to her mom. A few hours after she left, I called her a few times and it went right to voice a mail, meaning her phone was off. So I called her mother knowing she wouldn't answer me and left a voice email asking if Jane had made it to her house safely. It had been hours and I hadn't heard from her. Few minutes pass and she calls me back, tells me that she called Jane and couldn't get an answer as I knew she wouldn't. Started asking when she left, etc. I told her she left that morning to help her with spring cleaning. This was news to her mother who never spoke to her about that. Her worrying about Jane had her talking. I sit there thinking about what I'll tell Jane when she speaks to her mom and has time to think of an excuse. She gets home later that night and seems totally nonchalant. Turns out her phone is still off, so she hasn't even gotten the calls from me or her mom yet. Perfect. I ask her how her day went. She tells me how much she hates dusting. There was so much on the top of the cabinets and how they had to carry stuff down to the basement, an elevator would have been nice, all that good stuff. I then decide to let her know I was aware she hadn't been to her mom's. Long story short, she admits to cheating on me again, and had been essentially, since I had forgiven her for the first time. While I was dealing with the anxiety and insecurity, while she was reassuring me, it would never happen again, and I was the only one for her, while we talked about buying a place and all our goals she was fucking around with the same dude, mostly online but had met up with him every so often for quickest during the day. I basically shut down entirely, and went to stay with a friend, and told Jane it was over. The more I thought about it, the more my sadness turned to anger, and the stupider I felt for giving her a second chance. I had wasted two years of my life, and made myself vulnerable to someone I fell in love with, who I thought loved me, and made a fool of me. Jane was inconsolable, calling me, my friend who I was staying with, texting and threatening to show up in hopes of fixing it. She was on the verge of a breakdown, claiming she'd do anything talk to therapists, give me total access to her accounts, anything she could do to make it right. To take back the past. Which is when I seen the opportunity to get back at her. I told her I wanted to be able to forgive her, but big changes needed to happen in order for me to do that. She jumped at the opportunity. I told her I needed to be sure she was serious about our future. First, I wanted to look at renting a bigger place, somewhere without bad memories. We were month to month. So gave my landlord notice and asked her to go through the process of securing us a new lease elsewhere as I couldn't handle it right then. 
I then told her that, if we are going to learn to trust again, I want to start taking steps towards an engagement. I don't want to focus on the past. If I do I'll want to leave. I just want to focus on the future and the first step should be a joint account. That I still trust her with finances, to which she agreed. I deposited a few hundred into the account, told her I had spent the rest of my savings on paying two months advance rent to my buddy I was staying with, and he'd give it back to me in installments, since I'd be moving out sooner than planned. Now that this was set up, I figured I wanted to ruin her social life, but I knew it would take some more plotting to do that. So I told her to come back to our apartment. And we stayed there waiting out the end of the month. We cried together, she was overwhelmingly affectionate, let me watch her delete her social media pages, made me breakfast most days. She was just so sorry. I wanted to scream at her so badly, but instead I'd ask for comfort and reassurance, and play the wounded animal. We had plenty of makeup sex too, which is the only thing I feel slightly guilty about. She was sure to be extra adventurous for my sake, so when I asked if I could take some photos she was all for it. During this time, I had been distant from our mutual friends, turning down invites and saying things like Jane wouldn't want me to go, or asking a few one-on-one for advice for how do they handle it when their partner gets mad. Does your partner ever break stuff or slap you? No no, Jane would never do that. I was just wondering. Then, shortly before we planned to move into the new place, I had cold feet. Told her I didn't think I could do it. That I just didn't trust her. She was frantic, pleading with me not to leave again, and begging for something she could do to fix it. So I told her I believed our social circle put her up to it. She swore up and down that no one had any idea. But I asked how, could I believe her? She lied to me twice before, I don't trust her around them. That a fresh start means new people in our lives too. That I'd never feel comfortable again as these people I don't know if I can trust were still around. I wore her down until she agreed to ghost them all. But that wasn't enough for me. I told her that I needed the bridge to be burnt because I don't trust them. So I had her rejoin and send a message to the group chat complaining about fake friends, backstabbers and how she was better without them, then block them all. She cried for a long time over that, but if it was what I needed to stay, she'd get over it. I had a bunch of messages from mutual friends asking WTF, to which I told them it was complicated, and I'd talk soon. Few more days pass, and it's time to move into the new place. We spend the day moving some things in, and Jane is practically giddy talking about our future plans. I tell her to pick up anything she needs from her mom's, and I'm going to get some stuff from my parents' place and we'll meet back at the apartment that night. As soon as she leaves, I call my friend, and we pack up everything I had brought over, and take it back to his place. Then I message my friends, telling them Jean had been abusive the last few months, lie, which is why I didn't go out, and that the reason she had blocked them is, because she thought I told them, and that they were telling me to leave her. I then went to the bank and drained our joint account, which had about $400 from me and about $3,700 and some change from her. Then I sent an email to Jane's mother claiming to be an angry ex who had access to my phone, including all those sexy time photos I took with Jane. Just thought you should know what your whore daughter and that piece of shit get up to. And lastly, I had my friend hit me in the eye twice, swelling it up then blocked Jane and asked two of our mutual friends to meet up with me. And just like that, it was over. I told them how Jane had become mentally and physically abusive for over the past few months after I caught her cheating. I showed them the screenshots of her chats with this guy. I told them I had kept quiet to keep the peace, how she lashed out at all of them when she thought they had been helping me behind her back, how it was so out of character. How she threw a remote at me and swelled my eye when we were moving, and that's when I knew I needed to leave and why I needed to take the money to get to safety. Jane showed up to my friend's house looking for me while he told her I had moved and would call the cops if she showed up again while I hid upstairs. 
heard how she frantically tried to find me to figure out what was happening and reached out to our mutual friends to make amends and tell them it was all my idea, only to discover the ones I had been talking to and subtly alluding to being abused for weeks as well as the ones who remembered me coming to them after the first time she cheated and the ones who had seen my eye had passed along the information to her entire social circle and she was met with threats, insults and being ghosted by everyone she knew. How she told the last mutual friend she spoke to before he ghosted her that her mother had said she'd pray for her and cut her off financially for living an unhealthy lifestyle until she can smarten up after seeing the photos, which she can't prove I've ever sent as her mother certainly wouldn't have kept them, and that she's severely depressed. She's trapped in a six-month lease with zero money, no friends to rely on, and no one to help her stay afloat aside from maybe her former fling should she run to him. I'll be using her money to cover rent on a new apartment for myself and bought my friend a nice gift for being my accomplice in this. I plan to stay in therapy, both to get over this and to work through my feelings and how low I stoop to get revenge as I don't want to carry this negativity with me in the future. After that, I plan to relearn how to be single and enjoy life on my own with the friends I inherited to keep me company. Edit, and before anyone forgets what sub they're in, I know this was shitty of me to do. But I'm okay with that. And no, I don't agree that this brings me to her level. Fucking over someone who trusted you and never did anything to break your trust is not the same as getting revenge on someone who fucked you over. Coming to this sub and complaining about people's morals is like going to the drug subreddit and lecturing people on the dangers 